So these are your polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Poly, multiple, uh, cyclic, they're cycle, they've got these rings. Aromatic, they're aromatic benzene rings for the most part. Compounds, that's the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Um, 16, you've always heard of the EPA priority 16 pollutants. These are the 16 here listed in alphabetical order, um, showing, showing you uh, the different uh, compounds, their different structures. And people get intimidated by this because, you know, what the heck, I don't, I hated chemistry. No, I didn't hate chemistry, but I think a lot of people did hate chemistry in school. When they start to talk about, you know, benzo K fluoranthine or benzo GHI pyrrolene, their eyes sort of glaze over and they like, they, 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 just, they want out, right? Um, don't get intimidated by that. They're just names. They're just silly names that chemists put together to try to identify these things. You don't need to know them. You need to know about them and what they are. You need to maybe have a cheat sheet in front of you so that you can figure out what, what's what. But if you structure your data sets, you don't, once you've done it once, you probably don't have to do it again. And we're going to talk about that structure. But these are the 16 that they decided to measure. And I always ask this when I'm doing my pH uh, presentations, because a lot of people don't realize it, is that you know, those 16 must be really, really important, considering that's what they've been measuring for so long. And it's like, well, kind of. You know, the, the people in 1976, and they decided to formalize this in 1978, that's when this 16 pH chemicals became the priority pollutants. 1970, has it changed since 1978? That's almost... Uh, it's, it's, it's almost as old as me, not quite. Um, but these, that's when these were devised. And if you're a chemist and you, you know about analytical chemistry and measurements, you can remember, if you remember back to the 1970s, our measurements weren't that good back then compared to now. And we could, we could, we were barely able to separate stuff. And so in 1978, they got together and decided that these were the most important um, using this beautiful chrom chromatography, not, by the way, this is terrible chromatography. This is a packed column, um, but this is the best day and age. This is a, a gas chromatograph of PAHs in an air sample from a Toronto, Ontario, from the Ministry of the Environment. And they were part of this discussion of figuring out which PAHs to measure. And this is the chromatography they're using. And what they did is they picked the, the 16 most abundant and most easily separated compounds using this technology in 1978. Hasn't changed since we've gone, well, 1976, sorry, I keep saying 78, 1976. And they decided this, and we've been measuring them religiously ever since. Haven't changed since 1976. Are they important? They were the major ones in 1976 and the best ones they could separate. Are they the most toxic? Not all the time. Are they the most important in your particular samples or all different samples? Not really. Um, probably needs a great big upgrade. Uh, but we continue to measure them because they've always been measured this way. So. Why do I insist on interpreting pHs? Uh, and here's a graphic of why. The pHs, the epitome of ubiquitous in the environment. They are absolutely everywhere. Uh, this makes it extremely important to figure out where your pHs are coming from. So uh, I've put some examples here of, of different sources, that worldwide sources that we have to consider. Um, maybe you're working in Alberta and you're working on an oil spill, so you're measuring pHs as a part of an oil spill. No problem, there are pHs in oil. But you have to remember that all these other sources are also contributing pHs to the environment in very large quantities. And they're distributing around the world and getting deposited. And you're going to pick them up as part of your routine measurements. So you know, the biggest one that we're seeing a great rise in lately is forest fires. Uh, that first picture on the top left is uh, forest fires that are happening. Uh, the one right next to it is showing the, the plume of smoke that's going across Canada. Um, we've, we've all experienced this over the summer months where we have haze that settles in on our cities. Um, that is smoke that is made of, there's a lot of pHs in that smoke, and that's getting distributed across the world, getting deposited, coming out in the rainfall, and getting into our environment. So these large uh, wildfires that we're seeing are contributing and distributing pHs across the environment in all these different environmental matrices, whether it's water or sediment or soil. Another big one, not so, not so important in our part of the world, but definitely a world contributor to pHs is volcanoes. That third picture on the top right is showing all the, the vo how volcanoes, one volcano can emit so many contaminants, so many gases, so many pHs. Um, they are a world contributor into natural sources of pHs in the environment. Maybe one that's a little more familiar to us, that top right-hand side one, um, an oil spill. 
Um, this is nice oil uh, released in a muskeg. You can see that nice uh, black stuff that's in there. Um, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about how you'd identify that particular type of PAHs that are coming from the oil as opposed to what's coming from those other particular sources. So uh, we've got sort of the natural ones, the forest fires, the volcanoes, oil spills that do happen. Um, maybe we go to the more human-caused ones on the bottom row, uh, burn barrels. Um, a lot of rural people still burn their garbage. There's a lot of uh, garbage burning. Uh, any type of combustion produces polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. So any type of burning that you can see out in the environment, you would see combustion. My second picture there is a gentleman trying to plug a, an exhaust. Any vehicle, diesel, gasoline, um, will, have, will be emitting pHs from that tailpipe. So there are pHs that'll be coming out of there. There's, that's an excessive amount, as you can see that poor dude get in the face, uh, getting hit with a bunch of pHs. Um, but uh, any car burning, uh, any, uh, any car exhaust or, or vehicle emissions will have a lot of pHs in it. Um, any, our manufacturing and industrial industry, these are coal-fired power plants in, in, in China. Uh, in, the, in that picture, not just China, we have a lot of still coal-fired power plants around the world. Um, not just coal, but any, again, any type of incineration or combustion, high temperature processes will release PAHs. Uh, another common one that's forgotten about is asphalt. So all our roads are covered with sealants and asphalt uh, and maybe made of asphalt. Those all have PAHs that water will drain along those, pull out the PAHs in, in some of the sediments that are flowing by and drain into our rivers and our, and our, and our environment. The thing that people, I think, forget about is the amount of pH is coming from these sources worldwide. These are huge quantities. So when, we, when I say ubiquitous, I mean ubiquitous. There's so large quantities of these pHs getting emitted into the environment, distributed, and eventually they do come back down to earth. In the rainfall, they'll gather in the rivers and the streams and, and gather in the low points in, in, in the funnels. So pHs are essentially everywhere in the environment. And as I said, any type of combustion, oil and, co and coal, petroleum distillates, asphalt and sealants, uh, we pre treated wood with creosote, those have large amounts of pHs as well. Um, so all of these, there's essentially pHs everywhere. When you're cooking stuff on the barbecue, not so much an environmental hazard, but uh, there's a lot of talk in, about the pHs that would be associated with barbecuing or smoking uh, fish or, or meat in your, in your uh, smoker at home. Those will also have pHs, but not such a, an important source for the environment.